Now, uh, the future of Adam Reynolds uh, has been a great talking point over the past few months, but PK, magic aside, Reynolds has finally made a decision. All done, yeah. Look, he spoke to his teammates today at South, told him he was leaving, didn't tell them where he was going, but uh, we learned later today that uh, he has committed himself to the Broncos. Hasn't signed yet. What he's got to do is, uh, at his own instigation, has asked for a medical so that the Broncos can be... Uh, confident that he's arriving in good shape. He's already had a medical with Cronulla, which he passed, but uh, he's now committed himself to the Broncos. Uh, significantly, uh, I think it's important to know that he's actually taking less to go to the Broncos than what the Cronulla offer is, which is very interesting. Well, that's huge. I mean, that, that was the reputation that the Broncos had had for so long, right? Good players go to the Broncos for less money. Yes. And so this is a, a win for them. But what, why is this a good move for Adam Reynolds, Hoops? It's a massive coup for the Broncos, first of all, Ben, to be able to land this signature, given all the players that they've lost, the gun, uh, emerging talent over the course of the last two years. But I just think Adam Reynolds behind a forward pack that includes front foot players like Payne Haas and Tavita Pangai, they're crying out for some structure, for some organisation, for somebody who can force dropouts, uh, kick 40-20s. I mean, sets. his all-round kicking game is the best in the NRL, Adam Reynolds. Whether you're talking long kicking, short kicking, field goals from outside 40 metres, whatever it is. So mm. the Broncos need a general, and this bloke's the perfect fit. It shores up his future as well. Long a, a contract of significant amount of time for him. He wanted a rich deal as well, and he gets good money to finish off his career. Um, will he be captain? Do you think he comes straight in and becomes captain of the club? I think that was part of it. Like, was that I part of it? Part of itself. <laughs> I, I think he would. I, look. Alex Glenn will retire, I think, at the end of this season. I think the important thing is, is when he does get in there, that Kevy Walter sits him down and says, righto, mate, how do you want to play? And how are we going to put a team around you? And he really takes input off Reynolds. Reynolds has had great education under Michael Maguire and Wayne Bennett, Anthony Seabold thrown in the middle there. So he knows his football, he knows what works for him. And as, as Hoops said, with, with the forwards they've got, and no one's doubted the outside backs and the forwards, it's just always been... That spine that's been the query in the last couple of years about the Broncos. Well, they've never had an issue with strike. Mm. That's no. the thing. They've had brilliance right across the panic, but they just haven't had the person to come in and connect it all. And, and when, the, when they do do... Uh, they go on their scoring sort of rampages, it's all individual stuff. Whereas Reynolds is the guy... Can you imagine now he's going to get up there, Broncos get in good, good ball position, position he rolls it in goals, they get a repeat set, suddenly you've got Haas and Pangai all that coming at you again. It's going to be a pretty good defence that's going to be able to stand two or three sets against those guys on their trial line. So that's the magic of uh, Adam Reynolds heading to Brisbane. Hoops, do we know who else is likely to perhaps join Adam Reynolds in Brisbane that's not there currently? They've got a number of gun players on the radar, Ben. A couple of his South Sydney teammates in Dane Gagai and Jaden Sewer. Uh, Kirk Capewell from the Penrith mm. Panthers, they've expressed an interest in him. Nico Hines from the Melbourne Storm. They can jag any of those sort of players. I think they will get one of either Gagai or Sua. Not sure which one yet. There's a suggestion Sua might want to return home to Brisbane for family reasons. They land one of them and a couple of other key signatures. All of a sudden, brand new ball game for the uh, Broncos. Yeah, Adam's definitely a huge part to changing how they play, but I think if all the leadership falls on him only, I think he does need the, a couple of extra reinforcements, like the Jaded Sewers, like a couple of other leaders. Payne Haas is mm. huge for the Broncos every week, but I still think that they're thin on the ground when it comes to leaders, and if that all falls on Adam, it's a lot for him to take. One team town, uh, a lot of pressure will be on his shoulders. We all love Adam and the way he approaches his he'll footy, be, and he loves okay, that Lara. stuff. He loves he'll, that stuff. He'll, he'll have a... a Champion little number seven that can be his partner in crime who's already at the club in yeah. Al Langer, who he can go under his wing and uh, what a combination those two will be. I reckon the priority for the for the Broncos right now should be Hines, Nico Hines from Melbourne. If, he, if they can get him, if they can land him, because he strike fullback. Yeah, he's a he's a quality fullback. You get him, suddenly you have got a, a gun seven, you have got a gun fullback. You're starting to get a little bit of strength through the spine, which is there. They're too weak there. The, the clubs. Or indicate they believe Turpin's the, the future at dummy half, so I, I, he's got to be the priority. They've got to, they've got to, they've got good outside backs coming through. They've already got plenty of strike on the edges. Uh, Hines is the Hines should be the priority. There's a quiet tip: if they they weren't to get Hines, that they might go after like a Matt Dufty or that mm. type of player. Or if they were to land Gagai, 
they could potentially move Herbie Farnworth and play him at fullback. So yeah, yeah, right. they've got a lot of moving pieces at the moment, the Broncos, but this is, you can't understate what a massive, you can't. important signature. You go back to, remember when Roy Asatasi initially signed at South all those yeah. years ago and it was the beginning of this incredible rebuild. This is what uh, this is what this signature today is. So this does mean. a couple of things, right? It, it I think allows the club to get in the market and perhaps attract players that wouldn't have gone there previously because Adam Reynolds is that type of player. It also gives Kevy some breathing space to develop the team this year because he was under pressure to start winning. I'm not suggesting for one moment he'll want to win any less, but right now in the knowledge that Adam Reynolds is going to be there next year, mm. Kevy can treat this season almost as a development year. He's setting up the organisation to build the premiership habits in some of those younger players, yeah. readying them for the arrival of a marquee number seven and mm. keep building that. I think w whatever he does this year will be accelerated by Adam, Adam Reynolds ne next year. Now, this is a bad miss by the Sharks. H how did they get it wrong? Horrendous. Oh, they got it wrong on a lot of levels, didn't they? Well, uh, Adam Reynolds, when he initially had conversations with Craig Fitzgibbon, he told Fitzgibbon that he wanted to come to Cronulla and he was mm. keen to be coached by Craig Fitzgibbon. You like what he heard. I think... For whatever reason, the people who were putting the deal together at Cronulla might have got a little bit of false hope and false confidence. And as Kenty wrote about in his column today, they naively, the best deal makers in the business, your Nick Politis, your Matt Tripps, your Wayne Bennett, you roll out your big guns when you want to land a key signature. Yeah. They sent the football manager, with all due respect, Darren Mooney, yeah, they that, didn't get the deal done. The chief executive and the chairman should have shown Adam Reynolds how much he meant to them by turning up and say, mate, what's it going to take to get the deal and done? And to be fair, they're not big guns either. No, no, but they're the biggest the club can offer. Yeah. Okay, and, and even, even if you want to bring in a gallon or something 100%. like that. 100%. But you, you've got to bring in the big guns and you've got to really just lay out the red carpet and show how important to your organisation he is. And the second part was when they made the initial approach, they lowballed him on the deal. Mm. And it was, everyone was like, what? And it was and a said, oh, we thought it was a negotiating process. Do you think this will be a learning for Craig Fitzgibbon, though? Well, he's got a full-time job at the Roosters at the moment, so it's difficult for him to, to front up and have these one-on-one -on -one Lara, less for Craig Fitzgibbon, more for yeah. Dino Mezzatesta well, that he's, and the chairman I mean. Steve May. So he, Craig Fitzgibbon is at the Roosters. Yeah. But so, he realises now probably that he has to be the face of those negotiations. I think he'd be worried yeah. mm. that this was botched the way it was. Mm. And what is he walking into? Well, Fitzgibbon walked out of the meeting with Reynolds pretty confident he was going to get it. Mm. Then he handed it over to the club and it fell mm. apart. And, and, and this was the issue, right? They, they employed Craig Fitzgibbon believing he was going to be the silver bullet, yeah. going to solve all the problems. But rugby league clubs are bigger than that. They require more than that. And that's, you know, what Melbourne get. That's what the Roosters get. That was, that's what the Broncos used to get. That's what Wayne Bennett understands. Mm. And, and that's the future now for the Sharks, is the chairman, CEO, head coach need to be aligned on what excellence looks like in every part of that organisation.